Hi, this is E. David Crawford, Editor-in-Chief of Grand Rounds in Urology. Several days ago, the Food and Drug Administration amended the package insert for Nubeca, their alutamide, outlining some improvements in survival and other endpoints. Joining me to discuss this is uh, my good friend, international expert in prostate cancer and a guy that's uh, been involved in so many studies. Um, and he's going to talk about the uh, what the impact of this is and follow up to the New England Journal presentation that was out a few months ago. Thanks very much, David. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you so much. Um, so the Aramis trial, a global phase three trial, which demonstrated that you know, uh, darolutamide two pills twice daily uh, initially met the, the primary endpoint of metastasis-free survival. And that led to the first New England Journal publication uh, Kareem Fazazi is the first author. Um, and then when we looked at the primary endpoint there, as similar to the other important um, two other NMCRPC trials, um, MFS is a composite endpoint of uh, essentially radiographic progression uh, as well as death. And for all three of the NMCRPC trials, which have now been incorporated into uh, NCCN guidelines as you know, level one evidence for their use, we weren't able to conclude that there was a survival prolongation benefit. But now fortunately in 2020, um, we, can, we can see that. And so with additional follow-up, um, overall survival has been achieved in all three of the NMCRPC trials. I'll comment today on the Aramis trial. We saw a hazard ratio of, of 0.69, uh, the survival curves um, that were again published in a, a second New England Journal of Medicine publication, again presented uh, at both um, ASCO this year and at ESMO this year, 2020, uh, demonstrating a, uh, a, a survival benefit with a p-value of 0 0.003, again, a hazard ratio of 0.69 or a 31% reduction in the risk of death the other nice um, aspect that came out of, of this particular study was that in addition to a, a survival benefit, we had other key secondary endpoints. Uh, in our hierarchical um, uh, evaluation, uh, survival was at the top of the uh, hierarchical list. So if that had, was not achieved, we could not have looked at additional uh, key important secondary endpoints. The other two key secondary endpoints was a delay in for t uh, time to pain progression and uh, time to the requirement for cytotoxic chemotherapy. So these two secondary endpoints, along with overall survival, have now most recently been added to the, the product information, the label uh, for um, darolutamide, also known as Nubeca. Neil, you know, thanks for updating us. You know, this, uh, this, this is an interesting adventure here, this non-metastatic castrate resistant prostate cancer. And, you know, it was a iatrogenic disease state that we created and didn't have anything to offer. And now we have three drugs, apalutamide, um, darolutamide and enzalutamide. And one of the things, I, at least I had concerns about two things, and maybe you can comment on it, was uh, did these things just uh, delay the inevitable and really not affect survival? And I think you've answered that. The other, the other important thing is what it did to quality of life. So you know, what so the, the take-home message is? Yeah, those are really good points. And 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 so when I have a patient who has an MCRPC, where do we find these patients? Where they arise from our our PSA biochemical relapse population, who we make a decision to start. Uh, testosterone suppression upon, then at, at some point uh, uh, that PSA starts to rise despite confirming a castrate level of testosterone. In all three NMCRPC studies, we really were, you know, qualifying for patients who had PSA doubling times of less than or equal to 10 months. A lot of prior trials demonstrated that that was a very good surrogate for a more biologically active disease. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I have a patient whose PSA is rising and, I, and, I, and they've been on chronic ADT, they, they're, well, they're asymptomatic, right? Except for the, the testosterone suppression side effects. 
And they may say, well, because they're they tend to be elderly. If we define elderly as you know in the in the early to mid seventies range, and they may say, well, you know, I, why do I want to start another medication? Is it going to cause me additional side effects? And and what's what's nice about all three trials is that they did you know validated um, questionnaires and in these instruments, and by and large, the the quality of life uh, uh, metrics of these questionnaires did not show uh, at all any significant change between the, the treatment arms of the androgen receptor pathway inhibitors versus the ADT, which, you know, there is the, the fatigue and there may be some depression and part of T suppression. But I do think what's of note in some of the data that's already been presented, published, um, there are some nuanced differences in the AE profiles. I think it's important for our colleagues to be aware of these differences, whether it's in falls and fractures or hypertension or other cardiovascular events or, or cognitive uh, effects. And I, I would just encourage all of our, our colleagues to you know, get experience with all three of these drugs. They're, they're all three clearly active, clearly have met MFS and have clearly improved uh, the overall survival benefit. You know, it's the, there was a lot of discussion about the validity of MFS when that cert first came out and was accepted by the FDA. And I think that this survival benefit validates that, which is very important. Otherwise, uh, we would be two or three years behind the approval of these drugs. One last question, Neil, in the last minute or so we have. You know, we've sort of witnessed um, the, the pathway of development of, of these drugs, particularly enzalutamide that started out post-chemo, pre-chemo, and in this space, um, where, where are they going right now? Where's sterilutamide going? Is that, are we going uh, earlier in the disease? What, what, do you, what are the trials ongoing and what do you think is going to happen? Yeah, an important question. You know, look at the wonderful things that have happened you know, since the original approval of, of enzalutamide in the AFFIRM trial post-chemotherapy. And enzalutamide really commands the greatest breadth of trials and the greatest, you know, real world worldwide exposure. That said, it's always great to have competition. Now we have apalutamide and we have darolutamide. Um, apalutamide and enzalutamide have an MCSPC uh, metastatic approval for both low and high volume disease. Um, and they also, and, and, and enzalutamide alone has approval for uh, MCRPC pre and post chemotherapy. I think darolutamide, to answer your question, David, is moving into all of these spaces, uh, both in the MCSPC, the uh, Aracens trial has completed. It's a very interesting study. We should have a readout, I believe, sometime in, in 2021. And this looked at ADT plus docetaxel plus or minus darolutamide for patients with both low and high volume disease. So will triplet therapy uh, be of benefit? Uh, and then also there may be other in, uh, trials just looking at um, darolutamide plus ADT in that same MCSPC space. And further to look at uh, darolutamide in MCRPC uh, prior to chemotherapy. And, and all of this will just give uh, patients and clinicians, ultimately once we have the data, uh, and, and presumably further a uh, regulatory uh, label expansion opportunities to think about uh, uh, different uh, choices. And, and, and then, you know, as we talk about accessibility throughout, you know, not only the United States, but globally, uh, it'll help hopefully improve um, accessibility for, for patient consideration. Neil, thanks for uh, sharing this late breaking news with us that um, impacts how we take care of patients and what we dis discuss with them. Um, again, um, have a great rest of your day and uh, hope to see you sometime soon in a meeting. I know like you, I'm getting sort of, you know, interacting with your colleagues in person and uh, versus the computer is completely different, but at least we're able to do some of it. So thanks a lot, Neil. Thank you, David.